that I'm spending a lot more time sort of doing my Instagram, uh, sort of working on that, I suppose, and taking a bit more interest in it, really, and seeing how it is. Um, and still buying a lot of clothes, unfortunately. Don't tell <laughs> um, Yeah, I suppose just like day to day, just I suppose getting dressed and getting up makes me feel better. And I suppose that's why I do it. Yeah. Um, I have bad days just like everybody else and you know you don't get dressed and stuff but generally getting dressed makes me feel good and yeah just yeah. like nice thing but especially like washing your hair god that makes you feel great doesn't it you know yeah. that kind of stuff. yeah and um, are you missing hairdressing now you're not doing it at the moment yeah a lot um at first I like I was still sad at first and I was like had like a bit of a breakdown, a big cry and things like that. Because it's just like that thing of, I felt like I was letting people down, like, because I couldn't do the hair anymore. Because hair for people is like a really big thing. So like, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Like your hair gets done mm. and, and roots are gone and you think, oh, amazing. But for me, not being able to do that for people and the feeling of like, I'm not going to see them for a while. And like, just panicking really. Just like, this, I hate letting people down. That's like my mm. thing. Um. So yeah, I, I am missing doing it a lot. And um, I'm sort of trying to give, clients advice where I can and stuff like that and help them out as much as I can um but yeah just hope nobody's done anything too drastic yeah because yeah, uh, um I used to be a hairdresser and uh, we've like spoken a little bit about this before yeah. and um yeah people's hair is just so important to them and you get clients that like you see on a weekly basis and you get to really know them really well as well so it's like that if yeah you, if you're around people all the time it's quite difficult to then go from just being on your own yeah definitely I think like conversation for me is everything like I'm so I see so many people coming in in every day week and stuff and you're right you get to know them and you get to know the families and the lives and you, you do you get a bond with them don't you and like mm. I miss I miss the salon like the hustle and bustle of it and stuff and I'm normally quite like um like boyfriend says I'm frantic so I'm quite like going there all the time and stuff so to slow down for me it's just been mad really so I'm not used to it I'm used to being like do, 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 and running around everywhere and a bit like sorry I'm out of breath and a bit hot you know blow dry and, and you know just and now I'm just a bit like okay now you get a chill it's just like yeah it's weird it's really weird yeah hairdressing is absolutely manic and I don't think that people realise how hard it can be as a job like yeah I, I mean it's really fun and really rewarding as well but just like lit, having your day like scheduled back to back clients and you're always running around and stuff yeah. do you find are you quite like um are you quite neat and tidy when you work as a hairdresser or have you got like stuff everywhere and like color everywhere um uh, I would probably say my friends that I work with will tell you I'm quite messy <laughs> <laughs> but like the end result was good um but yeah I suppose I'm like I'm not the best to clean up after myself but I do try like do you know what I mean I try and do things as I go along and things like that and, um but yeah the girls will tell you that I'm quite messy and you know, I'm a bit <laughs> close flatterer and stuff and yeah water everywhere and stuff if there's something gonna go wrong it's gonna be me that does it did you like hairdressing then or did you did, did you did I like did you, it yeah um yeah, I did. I I went into it because I was working at a salon like after, like outside of school. Yeah. Um, um, as a Saturday girl. Yeah. And then I kind of like I wanted to be an actress and I wanted to go to drama school and so like I didn't get into drama school so I carried on doing hairdressing. Yeah. And I was quite good at it so it was never like what I really really wanted to do. Yeah. But then I quite enjoyed it. And then it just got to the point where um, I'd like look in magazines and stuff and like hair magazines and stuff. And I'd always be more interested in the clothes than I was the hair. So it just got to the point where I was like, had the chance to move to London with my ex-boyfriend when he got a job yeah. in London. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go and study fashion then. So that's kind of like yeah. where it ended. It was never because I was like, oh, I hate hairdressing kind of thing. <laughs> but it's a lot it's a really really hard job I think if you're not yeah. 100% in it yeah you've definitely got to like you've got to be in it because like the, it's not like you don't I always say to people you don't go in it for like the money and stuff like you've got to go in it for like the love of the hair like, and you've got to really be passionate about wanting to make someone feel good because ultimately that's what you're doing in that chair is you're making them feel like 
the a million dollars sort of thing and and if you're doing it sort of like half-hearted then it comes across mm. and someone knows that you can't be bothered and that's not fair do you know what yeah. I mean because like they're spending their time and money and stuff um but yeah it is like I'm standing up on my feet all day like I've just been sitting down a lot obviously because I've not been doing anything and so I'm, when we do get back that's going to be an absolute like it's going to be an absolute killer like yeah. to stand up of like oh god how but, did you get into it um I didn't actually ever want to be a hairdresser which sounds ridiculous um so I left school at so my birthday's in the summer so I was like did GCSEs at 15 left school I uh, went to college did beauty thought I wanted to be a beautician realized that was it's lovely but it's very clinical and clean isn't it and I'm, mm. I'm quite a messy person so I always wanted to be a makeup artist and that was a dream, go to Hollywood, do that kind of thing and do prosthetics. So I did that for a couple of years and then I sort of did hairdressing on the sideline and stuff. And then I just kind of like fell into it. So like, like I said, um, I went, went and worked in Chop Shop for a bit. And then the lady who does my, did my mum's hair in the past, she just offered me an apprenticeship. But I was like 23, 23 and I was like, oh, I'm a bit, I'm a bit old, aren't I? Like, you know, like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do that, I'm too old. Um, but they actually took a chance on me and that's as the rest says history that's yeah just found my passion for it and that's it yeah mm. I started yeah. hairdressing I think when I was older because I I I can't remember what ha- oh I think I had a year out and I had another job and then yeah. I went back to like where I was a Saturday girl yeah and then went to uni for a bit and then went back into hairdressing like back to the old hairdressers again so I started it when I was like 20 or something so I was older yeah um yeah and I felt a bit the same it felt weird going back into it and like being an apprentice at at that age yeah definitely especially when I first started uh in hairdressers that I was in for the first salon I was in the one of the girls I was apprenticing for she was in my year at school so she'd done it since she left school. So I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, we went to school together, but then I'm running around. You know, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, so that was always a bit strange. But luckily, I was kind of picked up quite quickly and I was doing clients sooner rather than later sort of mm-hmm. thing. So, but yeah, it is, it, is, it is hard though, isn't it, when you go into something a bit later in life? Yeah. Just think, oh, oh. Have you had anyone that's come to your salon now via in because of instagram like has anyone found you the other way now um i'm not sure maybe younger girls that live in sort of like the white haven area maybe that kind of thing um that have done because obviously you put your work out there and stuff like that and then a lot of it's word of mouth um mm. suppose as well so because i don't i don't really post a lot of my hairdressing work on my instagram page um because i love i think i love fashion you know i love them equally the same but you know what i mean i want to be um i love fashion as well um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, come a lot of recommendations, put the odd thing on. So you do get people messaging now, which is lovely. And you get people saying like, would you, could have come? And I'm like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Come, come, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Where did your Instagram handle come from? Like, Cause it's got, you've got like the M in front of the Amy, haven't you? Yeah. So that was from, um, from a girl that I used to work with, which one of my friends, Gail. Um, so she used to call me Mamie. And it just stuck, and then like my surname is Peden, but it's spelled like P E D E N, but it's pronounced P. So <laughs> I wrote wrong, and I've been called like Peden, and you, you know things yeah. like that, different stuff. So I thought, oh, I'll go with Mamie and then P, and I thought, yeah, and it just sort of stuck ever since then, really. Oh, um, and I don't cute. know if I changed it, what I would change it to, so I'm just like, just going with that. <laughs> yeah, you just, it's funny because you get to know people through. Sometimes you don't really like register their names either through Instagram. You just kind of like read it and then you're like, oh, they're called, I was like, oh yeah, she's called Amy. Like it just, it, it took a while to register. <laughs> yeah, because if you like, oh, Amy Keen, you'd be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> like, yeah. How are you, yeah. um, how are you coping with lockdown anyway? Yeah, all right. Um, when it first happened, I was, I just didn't know where to put myself really just because I'm not used to it and like I said I felt like I was sort of like letting people down and it was just mm. like like and I, to be honest we all, I don't know whether we all thought it was going to last as long as it as it has Um, I think we thought oh we'll have a couple of weeks off work and you know it'll be fine we'll go back and we'll get into the swing of things and people will have missed too many hair appointments and yeah it'll all just figure itself out but as the longer it's gone on I've kind of had like days where I'm like quite like good and then I've had like low days where I just like I won't wash my hair and I won't get dressed and things mm. like that. 
I suppose yeah. like the other side of Instagram is like that people don't see that side of me, you know what I mean? Because I don't post things like that, but n- not everybody does either, do they really? So yeah. it is like, it is your highlight reel, isn't it really? Um, yeah. I find but, it hard like to, because when I am having like a really down day, it's hard to go on on camera and be like, oh, by the way, like, you yeah. know, I'm not always like happy, like this is actually going on as well. But those are the days when you don't want to be on it. So it it's yeah. like, it's hard if you want to like portray that kind of like real life situation. Yeah, definitely. I think like if I'm having a bit of a PMT period moment, nobody wants to see me crying into uh, like my cocoa pops or anything. So mm. it's just, it is, it is a tough one, isn't it? Um, yeah. Because I think we all come across as if we are happy all the time, but the truth is we're not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, good days and bad days. Um, I think I drank a lot in the first couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> like, off. And then I was like, right, calm yourself down. This is going to be a long time. Um, so yeah, so I've just like, it's, well, the weeks are just flying by though, aren't they? I feel oh like gosh, yeah. we're at the weekend again and it's going to be bank holiday. And I was like, what? Bank holiday? Again? It was just like, what the hell? So it's all just flying by um yeah it's going to be like pop a flag into summer before we realize it isn't it really yeah like, it's crazy do you, have you, have you have you been the same have you felt all right or? um yeah like kind of the same like up and down and then at first I was like really motivated to do loads of things and then now that like I'm very yeah I'm less motivated now I'm kind of just like doing the things that I feel like doing yeah and um yeah just just up and down really just like you just never know how you're gonna feel so no, yeah, like from one day from one day you could wake up and you feel great and the next you think oh i can't go on today you don't you just think i'll oh, just have a bit of a slob slob day and stuff yeah but i i'm like the same like i feel like getting dressed in the morning like definitely helps me feel feel better and i'm like kind of got that routine and then if i am gonna have a day off then i kind of use it to separate the days and be like okay I'm not gonna wear any makeup I'm not gonna dress up today because I'm gonna have a day off and then it kind of like makes it feel different yeah we're in the yeah. same place at the same time all the, all the time definitely I mean I've um because Rob's a gardener so he can still sort of work so um we cut his mum and dad's hedge like yesterday and I like had factor 50 on but I don't know if you can see on camera but I'm quite burnt on my head he like oh here. no I can't see it properly but <laughs> Oh. I was like, oh no, I'm so bad. <laughs> um, so it's like, like going across. So like, I've, like, but then like, I've had like no, like, no makeup on for like the past couple of days because you know just like putting around with him, helping him out and stuff. And then today it was quite. I was like, oh, I'm getting ready. It's like it's quite nice. It's like you know, yeah. I'm something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've organised like a Zoom coffee with some of my like girl mates on oh, a nice. Sunday, and that's nice to like get dressed up for that and like feel like you're actually doing something yeah, just makes it yeah. feel a bit different <laughs> yeah yeah that's, a, yeah that's a really nice idea yeah that's really good and um, should we see your the item that you love then let's move on to that yeah. so my love things are so i picked this guy up in a charity shop in Overstone. oh so that's it, cool it, i'll take it off the hanger it's an uh, old marks and spencers um and it's a man's blazer so it's like really lovely and soft blue velvet. I should probably give it a bit of a wipe down. <laughs> velvet just attracts, doesn't it? Attracts everything. Um, it's nice and oversized. Um, I normally have, I've got a bad habit of cutting shoulder pads out of things. And oh, yeah. I went with this one because um, I think it quite, it's quite nice and boxy and sort of oversized and stuff. Um, so that's like my love. And my other looks, I couldn't think like I needed to do two. Yeah. Um, is this dress from ASOS, which I'm sure you've seen on my feed. Yeah. It's just like my ultimate like summer dress. So it's like, yeah. Like, I love that one. In love with that. Um, and again, I ordered it in two sizes and, and I went for the smaller size, which I don't normally do because I don't like things tight across my chest and things. But it just felt like it needed to be like clinched in a little bit, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it's just such a lovely fabric and... I feel like I will keep it forever. Like, I think I don't think I will get rid of this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just lovely. Lovely in summary. And it's like, uh, is it like, it's like a mop of the sleeper dresses, isn't it? Mm. Like, which, which are beautiful. That's but, so nice. But, like, so spenny. Yeah. 
I know, I've been eyeing the map and I'm like, oh my god. What kind of material is that one then? Is it... This one is... It's a bit sort of not creepy, what's the right word? It's like a thicker cotton, so it's not really like... I don't know if you can sort of tell. Yeah. But it's not really like see-through, if you know what I mean. Like, so the detail on it's lovely. Um, which I was worried about, because obviously a lot of white dresses are very quite see-through. Uh, but it's quite like, it's like a heavier kind of cotton, if you know what you like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um... A bit thicker than a linen, if that makes sense. Because I find that I'm not really one for like wearing too much linen because I can't stand stuff that like creases up, you know, as soon as you wear it. Yeah. Well, some people don't mind, but I I just hate it. I have to have things that like don't, I'll, I'll like crease it and crinkle it up to like check whether it's going to, whether when you wear it's going to get messy <laughs> or not. <laughs> that, uh, the dress that you had on, on your stories was lovely, what you had on yesterday. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, are you that keeping cute. or are you sending back? Um, well, I I went into the lounge and I, I was like, Dad, what do you think of this? And he said, he was like, it's nearly nice. And I was like, yeah, was like, that's the thing. It's like almost really good. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I, I don't think I'm going to keep it. But then I no. keep looking at it and I'm like, oh, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's hard if you're sort of torn, isn't it? And you think, oh, I don't know. And then it's like, do you regret it or not if you send it back? And then it's, if it goes out of stock, you think, oh, no. Because, yeah. like, I've done that a million times. I like, send something back. And then you'll see somebody on Instagram and it looking beautiful. And you're like, oh, no, yeah. I, I sent you back. And you're like, oh. But, but then you know what feels right on you as well, don't you? So if you don't feel 100% comfortable in something, you're not going to feel nice when you're wearing it as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's no point hanging on. I find that with... Um yeah with clothes you just you have to you you do know don't you whether you're gonna yeah. where whether it's gonna last but there's a yeah. lot of things now where I find that you kind of feel like you have to if you see something that you like you have to get it because there's no time to think because things go out of stock so quickly oh 100% like um I've seen it on a couple of people's Instagram stories. They're about um, Z- Z- Zara sometimes they photograph things in really crazy ways and stuff. And they had a girl with these green shoes on, but she was like on the hob. I don't know if you've seen it or not. No, I can't remember which one that is. So I've seen it on a couple of people's stories and just like, oh my God, like what is Zara doing? But I was like, oh, she loves them shoes. Oh my God. Right. So I was like, Zara, do, 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 do. And I was like, look, so I was like, oh, size six, only size six left. So I was like, it's meant to be. Like, yeah. I need now. So I was just like, bang, bang. I was like, <laughs> it's easy it is like you just go bang 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 and then you're like oh yeah I, oh yeah i ordered that and you're like whoops it is so yeah i understand that because if you don't get something straight away like chances are it will go and then mm. you stop in after it then aren't you and stop looking on deep or thought or something like that and you're like oh like trying yeah. to get it it's like chasing after a boy that you can't that you can't get or that doesn't like you so you just you want it more and more whereas if the shoes were just like yeah I'm here all month you'd be you'd have that time to think about it and you'd be like actually you know what you're not that great so I'm gonna move on to another pair of shoes yeah yeah because you said you worked in Top Top as well didn't yeah. you yeah so like I remember like when you used to be like delivery day so and like I used to be like, oh my god, delivery, but like, right, okay, right, so I need this, 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 and this, and I'll put this in the cupboard, and I'll get this one, but then I'll get this one on Friday, and I'll get paid, blah, blah, And then, like, you go on, like, a month later, a month later, and you're like, it's still in the shop, and you're like, oh, it's not even, like, you know what I mean? And then it goes in sale, and you're like, whoa, whoa, what did you waste my money for? But then it's yeah. like, a repeat cycle, delivery come again, and I'd do it again, and I'd think, oh, here we stop, like, just, yeah. So, so many clothes from working there that are, like, ridiculous amounts, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the discount and you kind of get like used to that feeling of like always having something new yeah and oh. it's addictive yeah yeah. <laughs> and, yeah absolutely I'd be like going to the cinema on a Friday night and I'd be like oh I need a new top like no you know you go, you're walking in somewhere and it's dark you know it's easier than you walk back up yeah but really look like you like yeah I feel good I'm just gonna go in this but like yeah it's so silly but yeah and yeah. <laughs> trying to get better at not doing that but yeah it is hard because it's that sort of instant want isn't it mm. and then you're like quick get that and then you're like click click and then it comes and you're like oh lovely then it might sit in your wardrobe with a label on and you're like oh no yeah and at the moment there's not that ch- obviously there's depop and stuff but i find it difficult to like find vintage or second hand on depop because you don't know how it fits so yeah. you can't go charity shopping at the moment the only option is the internet 
I do miss having a mooch in the charity shops. It's like one of my things that I love to do because you just never know what you're going to find. You know, you never knew. It's just that element of like surprise, wasn't it? And if you've got something good, you're just like jackpot. This is this is good. This yeah. and then obviously like oh we won't get that but then you just like yeah but so yeah I do I miss that I'm looking forward to be able to do that again maybe we can yeah because I find that you've always got really good um vintage or like charity shop pieces like that like the blazer that you picked up that you love yeah yeah you seem good at like at finding them it is hard though because when you're going sometimes you're just looking for oh I don't know where to start and then I just like have a you know like good wrap through then I just think, is it? Isn't it? And sometimes if I've got Rob with me, I'll be like, what do you think? And they just be like, mm. you know, like pull them faces up for do. And I'm like, right, okay. And then sometimes I'm better just not to have his opinion because I just think, mm, like, you know, you're not wearing it. I am. So, yeah. But, yeah. I um, do, I'm shopping. <laughs> someone said, I, I think it was Megan Allaby said on her made.com interview that, like, don't ask for anyone else's opinion because their opinions will get inside your head and she's like just go with your gut and that's what I feel about with with shopping and with clothes like I have such a strong idea of what I like and if I ask someone else before they see it on me or they see the outfit like they're going to be like what the hell are you buying that for but obviously you're kind of creating something in your head yeah and then yeah their opinions will just like ruin it for you should we move on to your um the item that you find tricky then yeah so the tricky item is a slip skirt, which is like, ah, I, like absolutely love them, like love them to death. I've actually got them in quite a few different colours, but it's just something that I always put on and I think, oh, I don't know, you know, and like, I just, I think it's maybe because like they're a bit sort of figure hugging, aren't they really? Mm. And I'm maybe used to wearing things that are a bit slinky, it's so like everything a little bit oversized. Um, but I mean, I did wear, I have wore this one before and I wore it with a really big oversized jumper from other stories. I think when I got the jumper from other stories, I didn't realise that their medium isn't a sort of size 10 <laughs> um, and it's a lot bigger, mm. but really oversized, but I really, really love it and I still wear it. Um, and I, and it's kind of balanced it out, but I just, and, it, and this is like a beautiful, like lovely material and stuff, but I just always struggle with them. Mm. I don't know what, but then I see them other people and I, I love them. Yeah. Um, I, buy them as well um <laughs> I really wear them <laughs> maybe after this I'll, I'll reconsider and try again <laughs> I feel the same though with like those kinds of skirts because I love the look on other people and I think oh I'm just I had one from Topshop I think and I was like I'm just gonna wear it I'm just gonna do it regardless I like it I've seen it on other people I'm gonna wear yeah. it and then I put it on and then like just feel crap all day yeah and, I mean yeah. remember the um was it the rust one when the rust one first came out and everyone was just like it was like the go-to skirt wasn't it and yeah I got finally got my hands on one and I think I even got it in like a size 12 and I was just like yeah that'll do I'll just mm. wear it and stuff and I was like why who am I kidding because I wanted it that much I got like so many sizes bigger <laughs> no. um but yeah and then it just sort of sat in my wardrobe and I think I actually gave that one to one of my friends I think because I think she she was like oh well I'll take it off your hands and I was like perfect I was like yeah, someone's gonna wear it rather than just see my, my wardrobe yeah um, but yeah like I really love the color of this one as well but um I just yeah it, it really hasn't had the wear that it should have um mm. but maybe I will start to wear it a bit more if I can <laughs> just find it to style it a bit better I think um, they're tricky because if you've got a t-shirt on then you tuck in a t-shirt and you can see it can't you because of the material yeah, and then it's like, yeah. but if then you've got something really tight, then it feels very like, especially for me, like that kind of thing just feels very overdressed. Like I can wear massive floral dresses and things that you maybe wear to a wedding, but like, yeah, just because like I feel comfortable that in. But anything like slinky or like hugger, figure hugging, and I'm like, no, this is too much for me. I can't deal with that. Yeah, I'm just like, I think. Um... Bodycon was when I was, I think how old I'll have been. I definitely was in Topshop. Bodycon was about, and I was, you know, I was probably like, yeah, so my early 20s. And I was a bit mm-hmm. like, so it's more like, yeah, it's Bodycon. But then as I've got like older, it's just like, I don't like things super tight and I like everything a bit more oversized and things like that. And like, not that you don't want to show your figure off, but you don't want to be, I don't know, sexy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I struggle with really tight things as well like I have a few slip dresses as well but um 
if they're too tight, they've not been worn. Mm. Just sort of put in my wardrobe again. So, but yeah, so they're, they're a strange one, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm exactly the same. Yeah. Um, is there a, is there anything that you can ever rem- remember wearing where you like were wearing you like I'm never gonna wear this ever again? Um, I definitely bought bought into the sort of like fluorescent fluoro, you know that that kind of thing. Uh, again, wear a perfume top shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bright, luminous, lemon lime. Uh, sort of like a, a skate skirt. Yeah. I can't think what I had on top with it, and maybe a shirt or something. But I remember like getting ready for a night out, and I was just like, "Can I, can I, can I wear this? Is this okay?" Like you know, you just like this is too much. But it was a trend at the time, and I think I just really bought into it. And I wore it once, and I was like, "Yeah, you're, you're never getting, you're never getting worn again." It's like I was like, "No, <laughs> not for me." <laughs> Um, I've also I was looking through your Instagram and I always find that you've got you've always seemed to have done like a really good like shoe and sock combination because like yeah. I went right back for research purposes obviously oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like yeah I noticed that like you've always kind of done like that kind of shoes and really nice socks and stuff do you find that accessories are really important for you yeah, I think I think um, I've never really liked my feet, and I don't have a way of covering it up. But I'm just like, and I always just like that kind of thing. Like I've got my Birkenstock on with my socks in the house, probably on the sofa, which I shouldn't have. <laughs> but like, I just always feel a bit more comfortable. I don't know. I put a sock on, and I think yeah, it feels more pulled together. Do you know what I mean? And then I mean, if I was going to a wedding, I wouldn't, you know, somewhere fancy, I wouldn't do it. But like, sort of like for a night out or drinks or something like that. And I just think, yeah, I like this. Yeah. Mm. Or like just putting um, get your loafers on with the sock and stuff. Like, love that. Love that yeah. kind of. Look. Yeah, um, I love it. It's like the little touches, aren't it? Isn't it that like yeah. brings everything together and like makes it more more you, I guess. Yeah, def- yeah, definitely. Because you often hear people will say like, "Oh, I'd never do that." Like, I couldn't pull that off. And I'm like, "You could, you could, you could just try it, try it and see." You know what I mean? Like, they're like, "Oh no, it, it looks good on you." It's like, "No, give it a go." You know, you never, you never know until you try it. Mm. What it's gonna look like. But do you yeah. have to wear a uniform when you're working in the salon? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no. so good. Oh, thank God, no. Um, <laughs> Like, I remember going to um, Carlisle College, and that's where I sort of learned. Um, I used to go like one day a week and stuff. And we had to wear this like tabard, and it's like this black, you know, like kind of polyester, like it's kind of really fitted sort of thing. And I just like used to wear a black t shirt, and um, the teacher would just be like, Amy, where's your, where's your tabard? <laughs> where is it? They'd be like, well, I have it. Like, I do have it. It's my bag. And she's like, well, could you? And I'd be like, well, I'll put it on in practical, but not, in, so, you know, not while we're sitting in class, like theory. I was going to get, like, told off and things like that. So I just thought, I just hate that whole uniform thing. And then when I got into, when I obviously got into the salon, I was just like, do we have to wear a uniform? And they're like, no. They're like, hairdressers are like, you know, you all got your own style. It, you're... It's affecting your personality, isn't it? Like how you dress and stuff, and just yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't have the polyester under my arms, and oh mm. no, <laughs> no. Yeah, so not, the, the not being able to what we want, but as long as it's black, you can just wear, yeah, the one, yeah. wherever you, yeah. Because the clients will kind of pick, pick you like subconsciously or consciously, um, for, for to do their hair and like for a reason. So if they see like the a style that they like. It yeah. might draw them towards you a bit more, which is really cool. Yeah, um, definitely. Did you find that the clients ever like ask you for style advice then because you're not wearing a uniform? Do they, do they ever ask you anything like that? Yeah, and like I, I love like helping people. Like so, like so, like someone's going to a wedding or something like that, and I'm always like, "What are you wearing? Like, show me what you're wearing. What, what your shoes like? You know, are oh, you wearing something in your hair? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to know everything, and I'll be like, right." Where's your phone at? And they'll be like, oh, it's in my bag. And I'm like, right, do you want to lean down and get it? And be like, show, show me what you show me what you're wearing and stuff, and show me all your bits. And they're like, what do you think? And I'll be like, oh, and I'll be like, why don't you try do, 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 and like give give some advice and stuff like that. But yeah, I love, I love, I love doing that. So it's nice and I like seeing what people are gonna wear because it's always gonna be different to what I would wear as well. So it's nice to see the different like variation. Yeah. And I, I love a hair accessory as well. So if someone's doing something in the hair, I'm just like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like if you try a dress on or something and you haven't got your hair or your makeup done, it can look so different 
to when you when you've like actually got your hair done and stuff and then you, it can make me like something or not like something either way like if you think like I don't know if you ever get out of the shower or the bath and you've scrubbed your face to your red bar and your hair's all wet and then you think I'll just try that outfit on that's just came today yeah. <laughs> right on and you just go and you're like, like what what are you like what what do I look like and then you might try it on the next day once you've done your hair and your makeup and you're like yes like I'm down for this this is yeah. this is good yeah <laughs> yeah definitely um should we see your the random item then so my random item of clothing that I tend to buy a lot of these <laughs> I can already see a glimpse of it so like, I tend to buy a lot of the, these. I picked them up in charity, in vintage and stuff. And they're just like so like sparkly and everything. Oh, I and love them. Like, what? I don't know. Would this some grand wear them to bingo? I don't know. Like yeah. that kind of <laughs> um, And this one, like, this one's actually got the label on. How bad that? Um, <laughs> this, this one I picked up in Cow in Manchester. And it was it was reduced to like £9. It's a steal. But I've still not had it on. But my intention is to wear it backwards. Yeah. Me, like normally I don't really do a really low like B. I know this is one that's got got quite low B, but I tend to turn everything backwards and I wear a lot of dresses backwards and stuff because if it's quite low, I prefer my back out and my boobs out. <laughs> so that's really cool. That's such a good idea. I've never thought to do that. It's just like it's just kind of like like because I heard you saying that you like everything up to here. Well, I normally do as well. So generally, I'll be like, well, if that's too low, mm -hmm. I mean be there and fit like nice like a boat neck across there and I think yeah I can do yeah. it I can deal with that but it's just something that I've never still worn and I have quite a few of these as well which is terrible <laughs> <laughs> but one day <laughs> that's so great though and I know exactly what you mean when you say like Nan wears it to bingo and stuff but they're always in like the vintage shops aren't they there's like a section of them you get a lot in red and in white and stuff yeah but they're gorgeous do. and they're yeah. heavy as well like they've got yeah really like you eye heavily they're like they're really well like made as well like the embellishment on them is like really like good like the sleeve detail on this one i don't know if you can see like it kind of like it's just got yeah. really like a little cut out detail on it as well so it's like it's really cute but i've just never like never got around to wearing it which is awful ah oh, that's really cute um so do you you said you got that in manchester yeah um do you how close are you to Ma manchester then where where do you live again so I'm originally from, I literally, like, live, well, I work in Whitehaven, and then I've recently moved down to Ulverston um, with Rob, so, like, Rob's from Ulverston, so he's an hour down from me, so from Ulverston to Manchester, you're talking about an hour and 40, maybe, oh, okay. so it's not too far, but, like, from Egremont, it'd be, like, two hours and a bit, like, two hours and a half, something, depends, depends on how fast you're driving, so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that, like, where's the... If you wanted to like go on a day shopping or something, where is it that you would tend to go? Would it be Manchester? Is that too far? Yeah, yeah, definitely Manchester. Um, like my stepdad lives there, so like, um, like we've got like sort of like a little bit of family there as well. So I've always gone down to Manchester and stuff because he's like been up here. Then we've gone down there, and yeah, just uh, just open my eyes. So that, but when the traffic centre opened, I think I was just like, oh, amazing. But you know, oh so. God. And then, like, discovering the Northern Quarter, I was just like, where have you been all my life? Like, so good. Like, yeah, it's yeah. so cool. I, I love yeah. Manchester. It's great. Yeah, we were, like, torn because we we were nearly going to move to either Manchester or Margate. Oh, uh, but we chose, Mar chose Margate, so <laughs> a bit of a difference. I would love to go to Margate. How was it? Was it good? Yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah, because we still just need to be a bit more like London centric still because we were yeah. going to do like well kind of like Stockport area so that we could still get in and out of London but then we just decided that it was like because there's not like a commuter train there it would be yeah. completely different it would be like moving north whereas Margate you're still kind of in, in a borough of London even though you're not even though it's in Kent so it looks so cute because like, it's like seaside isn't it as well yeah so yeah I'm excited when are you when are you going? Um, so we're going there in not this Monday, but the Monday after, I think the eighth. I think. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good. So we're we're renting first. Um, yeah. We've seen a house that we like, but who knows with like what's gonna happen with that? Because I'm sure if people see loads of houses they like all the time, it doesn't mean they're gonna get it. So 
but we, we thought if we're there, it's easier to like view places and like get things moving and yeah. like know the areas as well because we yeah, don't really yeah. know it at all. So, yeah, it, all, it sounds really good. It yeah, really, yeah, it yeah, sounds really good. Um, okay, so let's finish off with your style icon. So icons, like for me, like, so I was thinking to myself, I was like, who do I love? But then I was like, I wrote down a few people. But then I was like, so for years, obviously growing up, because I was like sort of like 90s baby, it's like Kate Moss, so just mm. like ultimate, like she just nailed it every time. And obviously like love influences from the 60s and stuff like that. So I love like, you know, everyone loves a bit of Joan Birkin, don't they, and stuff. Yeah. And, and obviously Alexa Chung was just like, she's up, she's up there. Um, I'm trying to think who else did I write down. Oh, the Olsen twins. The Olsen, the yeah. Olsen stuff. Um, and I, like, I looked at my Pinterest for like who I actually saved and it was, it was just like, like Alexa Chung, Kate Moss, Sienna Miller and like Kate Bosworth. Have I said that right? Bosworth? Is that right? Um, like love people like that. But I think like for me as well, like inspiration comes from like Instagram as well. Cause I think it's kind of like taken over, hasn't it really? Mm. So where, whereas like when you're growing up, you'd read magazines and stuff like that and you'd be like, oh, love that, like da da da. But now you've got it on a visual kind of like thing, haven't you? And I just constantly save things. So, like, when you go to your saved items, it's just, like, a catalogue of, like, clothes, isn't it, for little, uh, yeah, Insta icons. So, yeah, I think yeah. just, like, Graham gives me, like, so much inspiration. So, yeah. That's what I love about it as well, is you can really, like, tailor who you follow. I mean, I think it's, in a way, like, it could be quite dangerous because then you've only got, like, an echo chamber. Like, I am definitely surrounded by people that i am got really similar style to so then it's bad because I'm only kind of seeing one thing but at the same time like if there's something that I don't want to see like for me it's not very good for me to I love Alexa Chung so much I love her style but she's not a very good style icon for me because she's just straight up and down and I want to be like that but I'm not like that so she makes me feel bad about myself really so I can kind of like you know tailor my feed a little bit and like have like healthy role healthy for me role models not yep. saying the lecture channel's not healthy but yeah healthy for me like role models and people that are like you know like not people that are buying like a thousand pound handbags and stuff because I can't afford that it's like seeing people that can can have stuff that you know that is achievable for you to have as well which I think is nice <laughs> And it's like nice to have like it's going to grab um, some lip balm when it's really dry. Um, it's nice that you can see people that can you can sort of go out there and interpret your style into it as well, isn't there? Really, so you can kind of go, oh, they've got that, but yeah, I could go and get that in something similar rather than yeah. Um, I don't have any thousand pound bags either. <laughs> and it's nice that you can like meet I don't people as well. <laughs> yeah. But no, and I think like I love seeing people that love charity shopping as much as I do and mixing like high street with it and stuff and making your own style and putting your own spin on things as well which is really nice yeah yeah that is really good it's it's definitely it's definitely like yeah I think it's definitely a good thing and a bad thing um but I think when you're having a bad day it's like you just take a step back from it don't you really and then kind of right hang on that's fine that's their life but this is mine and just like and you've got lots of good things going on as well so Yeah. yeah yeah And you can connect with them as well. And I don't think there's, it's kind of taken away that, um, like that copycat thing. So like, I feel now that people are more like sharing their style and they want you to have the same things as them. And like, it's flattering rather than being like, oh my God, you've bought the same dress as me. Because like in school or like, you know, in the American high school movies, it was like, oh my God, we're wearing the same dress. Whereas now people (laughs) kind of like celebrate that, which I really love. Yeah, I remember um, going to Radio One Big, Big Weekend, and it was in Carlo. And um, I'd never really been to like any kind of. I think I missed out on festivals and stuff. And uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, amazing!" And I was like, "I wear sort of sundress and top shorts and stuff, and like little barber on top." And I thought, "No, no, I've missed out." And yeah. <laughs> I so there's like three people with it on, and like I got a picture of everyone. I was just like, "Yeah." It's, like, <laughs> come on then. But it's just like one of them. Like, oh my god, was it the same? It wasn't like why are you wearing that dress? It's just, like, amazing. We've got yeah. the same dress on. Yeah. yeah, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and I have one more question specifically yeah. just for you. I was going to yeah. ask, have you got your eye on 
anything at the moment that you want to buy because I feel like you're really good with like those killer high street pieces that are just amazing so is there anything that's like in your basket or on the way that we should know about <laughs> on the way is a pair of strappy green heels from Zara with a small heel on and they strap around your ankle and they're like a lime green and they I don't know if they're actually, they're actually satin so I'm hoping they're going to be gorgeous when they come but if they're not <laughs> <laughs> um, and my basket is always full I'm always virtually shopping like I constantly just save things like for a rainy day they have and probably never ever get bought maybe like two things out of that get bought but I just love to virtual shop so lots of summer dresses yeah uh, Constantly put like high waisted trousers in as well, um, blazers because you can't go wrong. Because I just feel like you need every colour. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, a few bits of summer sandals and things in like shorts, quite mm-hmm. like high shorts that I'm into. Um, but yeah, constantly saving all the time, constantly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, fab. Well, thank you so much for being on Life Very in welcome. Clothes. I've absolutely okay. loved chatting to you. Bye. 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 Thank you.